video from my July 2018 trip to Bali, Indonesia. I broke this trip up into two parts, one to Ahmed in the north east of the island and one to Nusa Lembongan in the lower southern eastern portion of the island. So I thought it made more sense to break the video into two parts. This is the Ahmed portion, which is mostly macro diving. And it didn't disappoint. Here is a video of one of my favorite, the peacock mantis shrimp, which is a basher type mantis shrimp. We only actually saw a couple of these on the trip. This was an itty bitty, teeny tiny, pea sized yellow box fish. I was so excited to see this thing. Getting video of some of these macro creatures was incredibly difficult given their tiny size. This is a tiny, tiny tiger shrimp. It's maybe a quarter of an inch long. The guy was very excited when he found these. These weren't on my top 10 list, but I was glad he did. My favorite part were the frogfish. This, I believe, is a twin spot frogfish from that big circular spot you can see on the right side there near its dorsal fin. It was quite cute watching them walk down the reef. I, we saw five or six different species. The problem is the same species can beat the same color. This, however, was my favorite. This is a clown, or also known as a warty frogfish. It was just meandering its way down this little tiny, you know, canyon, for lack of better words, on a black substrate, and it was gorgeous. This little guy was maybe an inch or so long. These were awesome as well. This is what's called a boxer crab, or a pom-pom crab. It's a crab that has a mutualistic relationship with anemones. It holds two in its, in its pinchers, and it waves them around at an enemy as a defense mechanism. Here you can see it doing its, its waving dance. Some folks associate this with the gloves of a boxer. To me, because it holds the anemones in its hands and the enemies are kind of lacy, I think pom-pom crab makes a lot more sense than boxer crab, but that's just me. This was a mimic octopus. We saw it on a night dive. We actually ended up seeing two different mimic octopus, but this was the best video footage that I shot. Mimic octopus are amazing in that, true to their name, they will actually mimic other creatures, such as flatfish or scorpionfish, by changing the arrangement of their arms to mimic that, that creature. They also change the way they swim as well. Absolutely amazing octopus. There were other cephalopods. Here's a large cuttlefish. But what was really cool was, was the density of some of these things. So here you see the cuttlefish, and here you see a coconut octopus. Now, because octopi have chromatophores in their skin, they can change color and texture. The giveaway on a coconut octopus is because its sucker cups um, have sort of a reflective or mirror-like property around the outside of them. You can see it really well here. The reason they're called coconut octopus is because they wrap themselves in shells, as you can see from this behavior. Normally it's a coconut, but where they don't have access to a coconut, they'll make do with something else, like scallop shells, as is depicted in this particular video. This little guy is a bobtail squid. It's cute. It's maybe an inch and a half, two inches long, and it buries itself up to its eyes in the sand. You find these, just, just their eyes sticking out of the sand as you go down the reef. Finally, we get to the bobbit worm. This is the thing of nightmares. You can see it sits just above the sand, waiting for movement. And as the guide here is waving his wand over, you can see that there are five little feelers on the top of the worm, and it's, it's detecting water movement, waiting for a fish to go up above it. When it senses the fish, it will then lunge forward and close its four serrated jaws. It, it, these things are terrifying. Uh, they're maybe half an inch in diameter. There was also some really good reef diving in Ahmed. This is a site known as pyramids. I thought there might be one or two of these stacks of pyramids, but I was wrong. It was more like 20 plus. 
they drop these down on a sort of a sandy area to create an artificial reef. And they've been down for a while and are fairly well encrusted. I have an amazing picture of a purple leaf fish from this particular dive site. Also at this dive site was a huge collection of stingrays. I was really surprised by the number of them. I mean, they were just maybe a dozen of them just all in a row. I, I don't know why the, the gathering behavior like that, but I'm not going to complain. There's a little bit of current on this dive site, but really the current was not too bad in Ahmed. There were also giant clams. and I, I must have stopped to get video of just about every giant clam I possibly could. That's just me. I like giant clams. What's interesting about giant clams is that they're actually photosynthetic. Here is some video of the most famous wreck in Bali, known as the Liberty Wreck. It's a little northwest of Ahmed. Uh, it's you know a 20-minute boat ride at most, and it's one of the most frequently visited wrecks. This is one of the few si sites that I actually saw a bunch of divers on. I understand it's been down since the 60s after a volcanic eruption, and this was really cool. Also on the Liberty Wreck, it was a a bed of garden eels. But what was really cool about this was that there were two different species. You can see the smaller white ones in the foreground that I'm used to, but there was also a significantly larger black one in the back.